We have some pretty crazy news coming out of Montana. They've banned TikTok. What does that mean? Well, we're going to talk about it. What I've done is read a left-leaning, a center, and a right-leaning news article, and I've taken the consistent facts across those three articles, and we're going to talk about those. Everything else is speculation or opinion, and I'm sure that you are going to love doing that in the comment section, but just for the point of this video, I just want to talk to you because a lot of people don't necessarily know exactly what's going on, uh, and they might infer incorrect things. So let's talk about the facts and how it affects you because stuff like this may start in Montana, but it could very easily become a nationwide thing. So the governor of Montana signed a bill outlawing TikTok that takes into effect January 1st, 2024. The fine for <laughs> this, this breaking this law is $10,000 a day, but it's not going to be imposed on the TikTok users. So if you're some 13 year old doing your dances, don't worry, dance away. Uh, there, it's going to be imposed on the platforms that allow the download of this product, as well as TikTok itself. So like the Google Play Store or the Apple Store or the company, TikTok. The reason for this is because the state of Montana believes that TikTok is a threat to national security. Yes, you heard me right. They believe it's a threat to national security, not because it's addictive, not because it's a time waste, but because it's owned essentially by the Chinese government and they might be putting things in this app that somehow compromise any individual. We don't really know how, but they believe it's possible. And this isn't just like a crazy conspiracy theory. The federal government under both Trump and Biden has expressed sentiment and made rules against allowing these government phones to have TikTok on them. So obviously there is something there. Is this law enforceable? I don't know. It does kind of strike me as a little bit scary that the government is trying to censor the internet. Uh, most countries who do that, I wouldn't want to live there. Uh, but there are so many loopholes around this. You can use a VPN, for example. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of VPNs you can download onto your phone uh, if you're in Montana and say, I'm not in Montana, I'm in California, or I'm in Norway, or I'm anywhere else where TikTok is allowed, and you're still going to be allowed to download the app. At that point, I have no clue who gets punished or how it's even proven that the person has it on their phone. I don't think the law really goes that far into uh, explaining what's going to happen if that occurs. It just is more, from the looks of it, kind of a stance against this kind of potential backdoor data harvesting, maybe you'd call it. This ban certainly is not without its opponents. People in Montana might like it, but the ACLU and the Electronic Freedom Frontier Federation, is that what it's called? The Electronic Frontier Federation. Uh, do not like this kind of censorship. They believe it's an attack on freedom of speech. And certainly it is an attack on freedom of speech in some context. You can't go on your app and do things. You're inhibiting a U.S. business to do business within the state lines. However, there are, are definitely instances where it's totally okay to restrict free speech. Uh, for example, if I had like nu nuclear codes or, or national secrets, I couldn't just tell people those. I couldn't freely speak about them. My freedom of speech would be inhibited. Um, another example, if I'm in an area and I yell fire and someone gets hurt, I could be held liable for those damages. So it's not like you can always say whatever you want to say. Will there be a legal battle over this? Yes, absolutely. I think it probably falls on the state of Montana to prove that what TikTok is doing poses a national threat because that's what this all kind of revolves around. Is it a national threat? You can ask the government because Trump said it was, Biden said it was, both of those um, regimes have rules or had rules against having TikTok on government phones. So they don't think it's okay. And if they don't think it's okay, is there something that we as civilians should know about? Is there a gap in information about the actual threat of what's going on? What makes it even more interesting is TikTok is in many ways a US company that just happens to be owned by someone else, which happens a lot. A lot of places are like that. The issue, though, is that it's the Chinese government who owns them, uh, and the Chinese government has been labeled a foreign adversary, and if you've been following the news, I'm sure you know why. They've done lots of things that a lot of people in the country are not happy about. This affects more than just TikTok, though. I'm sure there are tons of apps and platforms and companies like Facebook or Google or any of anyone like that who does not like the idea that any state can just go out there and say, oh, we think that your product is a threat to our sovereignty, to a threat to us as a state, therefore it's banned. So far, pretty much every company I can think of has been allowed to, as long as their product doesn't directly harm people, 
uh, do interstate commerce with relative impunity. I know there's laws and that kind of stuff, but big companies like this, like could you imagine if a cable network was banned in one state? That's kind of how it looks in my mind. Uh, but I do want to build like a different analogy to hopefully express exactly why everyone's so scared because talking about it in terms of data and apps and download and national security, it's, you know, it can be very subversive in action and that's hard to understand. So let's, let's talk about it in a way like if it was Coca-Cola. So let's, let's compare Coca-Cola, Coke, and TikTok. Both addictive. Caffeine and sugar are obviously addictive and TikTok's obviously addictive. Uh, both are consumable in the sense that they're products that are used by civilians. Um, and both have a robust network that can track people. So uh, let's look at Coke, for example. Uh, they've got their warehouses and their distribution networks and their vending machines. What if through all of those entities that they own, they could track someone's movement? And so based on the patterns of use and based on uh, tracking they have in their vending machines or in their, where, you know, in their retail routes, they're able to know that the director of the CIA, for example, uh, goes on this route every single day and picks up this Coke here. Um, and suddenly he's compromised because this information that is predictive of his actions is in someone else's hands. If that was the United States company, I'm sure it'd be bad as well. People wouldn't want that to be, like, you wouldn't want Google to know these things. But now imagine if North Korea owned Coke, and suddenly North Korea has access to if you're diabetic based on your consumption habits, uh, what route you go to pick up lunch, just stuff like that. Uh, that really scares a lot of people, and I think rightfully so. It could definitely, in the right context, be used to cause all sorts of problems. Now, amplify that by a million times because suddenly uh, you're buying Coke through your phone. And so everything on your phone also potentially could be accessed by the North Korean government, or in the case of TikTok, the Chinese government. Is that happening? Do phones have security measures in place to stop that? I have no idea. But I think as a hypothetical fear... Um, suddenly, if you were unaware of the potential damage that um, TikTok as a Chinese company could cause if they wanted to, I think viewing it in the, in the, under the lens or through the lens of a physical product might make it a little bit easier because you can touch that as opposed to TikTok, which is like, oh, it's an app. How bad can it be? I hope this was relatively concise and I hope you understand what's going on a little bit better. If you have any questions, ask them below. I'll try and answer them to the best of my ability. I'm not telling you what to think. I'm just kind of reporting what I saw because this kind of stuff does affect everyone in a multitude of ways. If you like this kind of video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys tomorrow.